everybody. Charles Hoskinson here, another one of your favorite ETC videos. So I wanted to give everybody a heads up of what's coming down the pipe on our side uh, for next week. So uh, as promised, we delivered both the 51% attack video, and you can see it on the IOHK YouTube channel. We also drafted two ECIPs. Uh, the first ECIP is the ECIP on the 51 attack resistance. We submitted it to the Ethereum Classic ECIP repo, but we're not actively participating in whatever process they have. So I don't even know if they're going to accept it or not. So we proactively created our own repositories in the IOHK GitHub for ECIPs so that we couldn't be censored and people can actually see what we've written. So this contains a uh, whole description of a variety of different options for 51% attack resistance. Uh, it's a good read. There's probably a typo or two. Um, the person who wrote it is a brilliant engineer, but uh, English is not his first language. Uh, so we'll send a technical writer through to check it because there's probably a typo or a grammatical error, one, uh, one or two different places. So setting that aside, uh, the um, uh, technology is really good. And we've, as I've mentioned, tested it on uh, Mantis already and demonstrated in the video 51% uh, attack resistance. Uh, so this will solve the problem completely, uh, but it does come with some trade-offs to be discussed. Uh, the other ECIP that we constructed was the Treasury ECIP. And this Treasury ECIP contains not only a description of a proto-Treasury system, uh, but it also contains the source code for a Treasury contract, which is about 700 lines of solidity at the moment. So uh, the reference implementation is actually right here. And you guys can go through that, install it, play around with it, uh, and enjoy it. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it for the ECIPs. So as I mentioned in my prior video, there's really four stages to getting this stuff done because we're moving beyond just, hey, should we adopt something or not? We're moving into philosophy land. So it's kind of UP, so understandability, practicality, philosophy, and comparison are the four stages that exist before we get to a point where there's consensus. So right now we're here in the understandability. So we submitted two ECIPs and those ECIPs are publicly available and we could just rest on our laurels and say, oh, look at the ECIPs. But the reality is that they have to be unpacked, discussed, and we have to kind of go through them as a community. So next week, what we're gonna do is host a uh, meeting that anybody can attend and the purpose of this meeting is to do a presentation and go through the ECIPs. Uh, we'll have a meeting for each ECIP. So this is the checkpoint and this is the treasury. And we'll have a presentation probably around 30 minutes long. And then that's going to be followed by a Q&A. This is not a debate. This is not about whether this is a good idea or a bad idea, or your idea is better, the sole point of this meeting, which will be recorded and publicly available and anybody can join, is so that we can kind of get to a point where people have a pretty good idea of what we're attempting to do. Uh, so the understandability component of the ECIP process, okay? Uh, and this is not a comparison meeting, not saying, well, this is why we're better than Veriblock or PureGuard or whatever. That's not the point of that. It's just so that people can understand what's going on. So if you come in expecting a debate, uh, there, it will be moderated. That's just not going to happen. The next step is practicality. And the practicality component is saying, okay, how difficult would this be to implement? So we have three clients, we have Mantis, who cares about that? We're gonna take care of that. So it's gonna get done regardless and it's already implemented Mantis. Uh, but then there are other clients to consider and there's a question about the implementation path. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna write some docs, uh, basically two, one for implementation in one of the clients and one for the implementation in the other client and give a kind of a rough idea of what an implementation path would look like to get into those clients. And we'll of course send those to the core devs of those clients. And uh, we would love to have dialogue with them. So we will write something up and think about it real hard and then send it their way and say, if you wanna go down this road, this is how you would probably get it done for your client. And there we'd also try to get an estimation of, of work. So we'd try to get an understanding, is this one week? 
is this one month? You know, is this three months? Dot, 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 dot. Okay. Again, this is not a debate. Uh, this is not about our solutions better than your solution. The first two stages are strictly about understanding what you're actually trying to do and then understanding how it would be done and how much work is required for that to be done. Understandability and practicality. Okay. And this process should be replicated for every single person who's proposing something. And we'd like to participate in that. So the very same people that will host and moderate the understandability meeting, uh, that'll probably be Tim. And we'll ask uh, Kevin Lord if he wants to play. Uh, we would love to redo this for all the other proposals. So for Veriblock, we already talked to Justin and they want to go do this. Uh, and the Pure Guard guys, it would be uh, really cool for them to do this as well. And we'll show up and and give them the same courtesy we, we ask other people to give us, which is we'll just ask questions because we want to understand what this is about. And then we'd like to get an understanding of what the implementation path looks like for their options. Okay. Then the last two are where we actually start getting into a debate a little bit. Okay. So this is philosophy. And when you talk about philosophy, you have to make an argument of how this fits our values. Now I noticed ETC Labs, the minute that I started talking, said everything I was saying is against the values of ETC. I guess they're the custodians of that. Uh, before we even propose anything or write anything down on paper, apparently it violates the values. I don't understand that, but this is the part where you begin to have that exploration. What does CODIS law mean? And these solutions, what are the philosophical implications of them? When you go to a federated system, for example, what that effectively means is that you are no longer a pure proof of work system. So all of that belief about where truth comes from, security comes from, has to change a little bit. When you change your consensus algorithm from one type of proof of work to another type of proof of work that uses different hardware, it changes who's in control. And there has to be some discussion about the philosophical implications of this both on the treasury side and on the consensus side. And this is where uh, people, for example, like Don, uh, we disagree with him a lot, but at least he writes articles about this and says, this is what our values are or how I perceive our values to be. And so that type of dialogue is quite productive here because now everybody's on equal footing. We all understand each other. We all understand the cost of pursuing that approach. And now we're in a position where we have to start making some decisions about what fits the philosophy and what doesn't fit the philosophy. And the last stage is comparison. So each of these uh, ideas carry basically a understandability, a practicality, and a philosophical connection. So you know, we'll say idea one, you have a UPP for that. Idea two, you have a UPP for that. Idea three, you have a UPP for that. Okay. And the community has to start making some decisions. There has to be some sort of decentralized way of converging to a decision. Now, in this particular case, because people are not being fully honest and there's some duplicity here, I do not believe that anything we produce, regardless of the arguments we make, regardless of how technically sound they are, are going to be implemented by certain teams. We ran into this with ETC Dev. Uh, back in 2017. They were not even willing to entertain the conversation. Okay. So what this effectively means is that users are going to have to vote and they're going to vote with their client. So come November, we should have at very least a test net, but very strong possibility, a mainnet version of Mantis. And Mantis will carry our ECIP code that we adopt for 51% attack protection as well as all the code necessary for the hard fork event uh, that will start populating the treasury. They, no one can stop us from submitting the treasury contract. That's the nature of ETC. So that will already be submitted before November. Now, we will talk to the other people in the ecosystem about having their clients also support this code. But you as an ETC user can make a decision. Do you want to keep the old code that's been forked from someone else and copy pasted and maintained by shallow development? Or do you want to adopt 
a security audited, well-tested, well-understood client that's been built from the ground up for ETC. And this choice you make carries profound implications. If you go with the old clients, which are seldom updated and don't really have a lot of innovation behind them, what you're effectively doing is giving consent to that management model. If you go with Mantis, what you're doing is saying, I agree with these ECIPs. I'm not telling you what to do. It's your decision as a ETC user, as a Ether Classic holder. But I'm just telling you that voting with your client is the first level of voting in the system. If we find out that two thirds of the clients are Mantis after we release it and some period of time has passed, uh, then we'll push for the hard fork. If it's less than that, then we'll have a broader discussion about options up to a burn smart contract to create a second ecosystem to basically be an exodus and leave behind uh, those who've decided to stay in effectively a dead chain. Uh, so we'll have some discussions at that time. Uh, but uh, this is basically the process we're going to follow. We don't know what the 51% attack solution is going to be that we implement. We've already implemented our own, but I am legitimately curious about Veriblock and other options. And I'd love to create a collaborative process where people talk to each other so that we can get to a point where we feel uh, and others feel comfortable with whatever that solution happens to be. And I do believe that that is less controversial than the treasury uh, idea. And there's uh, probably gonna be broad consensus around something, uh, but we have to get to a point where we understand the cost of it. We understand what it means, the philosophical implications of it and the option space that we have. And going to discord is not going to solve that problem. Going to Twitter or Telegram or Reddit is not gonna solve that problem. Those are shallow, pointless, mob-like conversations. They have to be held in a structured, respectful way where each team who has taken the time to present something is given the time to have the spotlight and be able to show that thing to the ETC community and explain why their idea is good. And the burden's on them to also explain why it is compatible with their understanding of the philosophy of ETC. If we follow this process, I honestly do believe we will converge to a good decision on the 51% attack solution that most people agree with outside of ego or perhaps economic pressure. The treasury system, I just don't believe in anything we say there is going to convince certain members of the community. They've already decided and they're not going to bend or move. And it's just a question of, are they in the majority or the minority? And what is the second plan? People ask, well, what would you do with the treasury? Here's a potential roadmap that we can write up and it'll be part of the discussion. Here's a beautiful protocol from Pramod Viswani. It's written out of Stanford, UIUC, MIT, and CMU. These are some of the top computer science schools in the world. This protocol is a new proof of work protocol, fully implemented in Rust, and it's 10,000 times faster with Bitcoin, about 100 times faster with Ethereum. Already tested, replayed the entire network, 10 years of history in just a few weeks, okay? We would implement something like this. We would move from the stock EVM and adopt the Jello paper and go to the K EVM and then fully adopt and build up the Firefly framework. Because code is law, you have to have proper tooling for that. We would also probably put in coded Merkle trees and get rid of these Merkle Patricia tries. So these are examples of things we would do if we were there and can build a roadmap. We'd make the system 100 times faster. We would put it on much more solid theoretical foundations and applied foundations for proper smart contract development. And of course, we would link it to technology that's sustainable and growing and built by some of the best people in the world who are from some of the best universities in the world doing peer-reviewed research that's already out on market. Probably also entertain a discussion about the nature of the consensus algorithm. Probably switch it to something like a SHA-3 or a random X, and that's a philosophical conversation, okay? So if there was a roadmap there, we could put one together and independent teams funded from the treasury could put their roadmaps together and we could repeat this process of understandability and practicality and philosophy and comparison. The difference is these teams would be working together and they'd be beholden to no one. And then the community could decide which route makes more sense. How aggressive do they want to be? How much simplicity versus complexity do they want to have? 
This is what a world with a treasury looks like. Constant progress, constant innovation, constant uh, discussion and dialogue from independent people who have the freedom to speak up when they see things aren't uh, going the way that they think they should be going, and compromise, people getting along, working together. Or you can have the past, which has been now four plus years of no progress, four plus years of copy paste, four plus years of limited adoption, no DAP growth, no token growth, and only a small group of people who have access to all of the funds. If you disagree with those people, they're just going to basically ignore you. And then you have no voice in the ecosystem. This is the reality of ETC. It's not worth anyone's time, in my view, if that's going to be the status quo, as I've said before. And frankly, the chain will continue to live for quite some time, just like NXT is still around and other ecosystems are still around, but it's going to run out of steam and people are going to ignore it and it will continue to fall down coin market cap with no future. I don't want that to happen. Too many good people have worked too long. Too many people have invested their brand, their time, their effort into trying to keep this concept of CODA's law viable. We have a good path with formal semantics, with formal testing frameworks to be able to do something different and legitimately novel in the cryptocurrency space and do that at a scale that even Ethereum 2 is probably not going to have for a while. And that's something that we can have in 2021 as an option. And we can do it with three independent clients, with three independent teams, and people can enjoy that diversity. And the, each and every one of these teams can bring their own ideas, their own flair, and their own capabilities into the ecosystem. That's what a treasury will get you. And it's not pie in the sky and long way off. A lot of this technology is already fully implemented. It exists. It's sitting up on the shelf waiting for people to plug it into a client. So in terms of that practicality, it's quite practical. It's ready to go. And how do you know it works? Because the best computer scientists at the best universities in the United States spent over two years of their life thinking about how to build something like this and get it done. And did they just talk about it? They, no, no. They built it and they tested it on Ethereum and on Bitcoin and demonstrated real life code you can download today and run today, the performance improvement. That's what we bring to the table is our capacity to work with these people, our capacity to read these papers and understand what's real and what's not real, and our capacity to have a vision and propose a roadmap. It's not charismatic leadership. That's just good old-fashioned hard work, putting in the work. And if a cryptocurrency has to have the right to exist, it has to earn that. And it doesn't get it for free. It doesn't get it because it's a name. And you've proven nothing when you take someone else's code, you copy that code, you kind of put it into your client, hope it works. We are the only group right now that started from the very beginning building a client from scratch. We could have very easily hired some Rust developers or Go developers, Fork, Geth, or Parity, started from there as a basis and had 60, 70% client representation. There were already people doing that. That was ETC dev. We took the time and spent a year and a half in the public domain building a client from scratch, demonstrating that we knew how to do that, demonstrating that it worked with both Ethereum and Ethereum Classic in a functional programming language, Scala. There's no other team right now that has that pedigree that's currently here making decisions. So this is directly to you, the holders of ETC, the miners of ETC, the people who still believe in love in this ecosystem. There are people here saying, let's get sustainable, let's get independent, and let's have a vision. Let's get somewhere. And let's do it with good foundations, and let's do it with good funding. And all you need to do is vote with your client. So when Mantis comes out soon, uh, we'd love for you to download that. It has a full, beautiful GUI. It's called the Luna Wallet. You guys are going to love it. We've done a lot of work to try to make the performance better, and we think Mantis is the best client ever built for ETC, one of the best cryptocurrency clients ever constructed. In the meantime, between now and November, we will put the time in to explain the things that we're doing and also talk about the roadmap. And we'll do that as much as we can. And we will try to work with the cooperative and other members of the community who have been honest and given us a fair shake and have tried to engage in a productive dialogue where and when it makes sense. We will not participate in strawman meetings 
that are already preset up to censor people or make efforts fail. I've, I'm sorry, after two times getting burned, after having people tell me they've heard enough from me, after the duplicity of going to Cointelegraph and Coindesk, uh, speaking on behalf of the whole community, blog posts about how the things we're doing don't correspond with the values of this ecosystem before we even actually propose something. Uh, medium articles saying that the status of our proposals is unknown, even though we told everybody it would come out on Wednesday and it did come out on Wednesday. This is not how people who come into an ecosystem trying to help an ecosystem should be treated. Because you know what? The DAP developers will be treated this way. The token issuers will be treated this way. And they're not as patient and they have no legacy or emotional investment in this ecosystem. So they'll simply just leave and go to Polkadot or to Tezos or to EOS or to Ethereum or to Ethereum 2 or to the 500 other options that are pretty good, such as Cardano, in the ecosystem. And then where does that leave you? Another four years of no growth, another four years of no progress, and the difference is the hash rate will fall so low and the price will fall so low that people won't even remember the coin and care about it. If you want that to happen, stick with the existing incumbent leadership and structures. They're built to deliver that. If you want something new and different, then I encourage you to participate in this process, starting with the you, understandability. Let's start there. And next week, Tim and Kevin, and hopefully others, will help moderate and put together some beautiful, great meetings where we can show off what we've done. And we'd love for you to come and ask questions about how does it work and what does it mean? Then we will put in the work to try to discuss how these things can be put into the other clients. And if those developers of those clients want to work with us and ask questions, we're happy to do that, or they can just completely ignore us. Okay, then eventually we'll write some philosophical documentation and try to talk around what does CODIS law mean to us? And where does CODIS law take us? And how are the things that we're proposing compatible with CODIS law? So the burdens on us and the others proposing about how these massive changes to the system are compatible with the underlying philosophy that people signed up for. And at the end of the day, you, the user, do the comparison. You'll see the work we've done and the proposals we've made, and you'll see the work others have done and the proposals they've made, and you vote with your client. Download and install the client that fits your values and what you feel is best for the ecosystem. Okay? If we have enough threshold, then let's do it with Mantis. If we don't, there's still the option of a burn where we split the community and uh, we run with a new system that has a set of people that are 100% in agreement with that. And we can leave behind the group of people that want to live like the last four years and keep that going and go nowhere. Okay, sometimes you have to do that as a community because there's just irreconcilable differences. And we'll set a threshold there too. And if we can't get a certain level, well, then these ideas just won't be adopted in ETC. And we spent the money and time to upgrade Mantis and get this option and write these ECIPs and do these meetings. And at least we tried. And then I can leave the ecosystem with my head held high and say, well, I gave everybody there a choice and an option. They didn't choose to go with that option, but at least we gave them that choice. Because right now you don't have a choice. Right now, you don't have any leadership. Right now, you don't have a roadmap or a future or a legitimate argument of how are you going to navigate 2021 and 2022. My belief is that to compete with choice, someone else has to offer it. So even if we fail in this roadmap, my hope is at least something will materialize out of it that will give sustainability to ETC and a future to ETC. If that doesn't happen, well, it is what it is. Let's not go down that road. Vote with your client. And I look forward to the meetings next week. I really do. They're going to be a lot of fun. And you know what? Once we get the ball rolling uh, and other people come in and they start hosting them for their solutions, you know what happens? You have a fertile dialogue. We're going to learn a lot. You guys are going to learn a lot. And whatever is written today in the ECIP process uh, will uh, will definitely change and iterate week by week and get to a much stronger form uh, that ultimately will definitely solve problems. One final thing. The great paper that I read recently from the MIT Sloan School of Management, 
and it was written by uh, Todd Astor, Michael Morales, uh, Don Kiefer, and Nelson Repenning. And it's called, What Problem Are You Trying to Solve? An Introduction to Structured Problem Solving. It's about 40 pages long, give or take. And it's a really good analysis on how problem solving is done and how to think about solving problems and describe problems and write problem statements and so forth. We use a lot of the techniques and principles from this paper in Cardano for Voltaire, our voting framework. And we're just getting started with that. And we're going to be iterating month by month by month. But I'd highly, highly recommend that people read this paper. It's free. It's open. It's available. It's published out of MIT. And this is the type of dialogue we should aspire to have, not descending to Discord or writing Medium posts or going to journalists and speaking on behalf of the entire community because no one does. What we need to do is move to a process where we understand each other. We understand the consequences of what we're saying. We understand what that means for the philosophy of the system we signed up for, and then we give people the ability to choose. That's what we need to aspire to and push to. And I have absolute confidence that there's enough people who believe in these things to get us there. And I have confidence that we can produce something really great for the ecosystem. Okay. So I look forward to next week. Thank you so much for listening and I'll talk to everybody soon.